Ladies, taking a little bit of DHEA, like five or 10 milligrams might be really, really good for insulin resistance. Now, you could take that, run away with that, and do that, and not watch the rest of this video, but I'm gonna explain the reasoning behind, because that's what I do, I'm an explainer, but I'm also gonna give you some other things that you could do along with that. You see, what happens when you look at the data, as women get older, estrogen levels decrease, right? Okay, you go through menopause, estrogen levels decrease. But there was a study recently that took a look at this specifically, and it looked at insulin tolerance tests and glucose tolerance tests. So they looked at how women handled glucose. And they found that post-menopause, when estrogen levels were lower, insulin tolerance and glucose tolerance went down. So insulin sensitivity decreased. And what that means is that after menopause, or simply when estrogen levels are low, you're less insulin sensitive and you are more, literally, insulin resistant. So that explains why this tends to happen as women get older. Now what they found with this is that when women had estrogen therapy, it actually corrected some of the issue. So having some estrogen treatment ended up making it so that insulin sensitivity remained nice and high, therefore staving off insulin resistance to a certain degree. So let's talk about this some more because we need to get into the mechanisms and understand how this is working, but the real meat and potatoes, so to speak, and what we can do. So let's dive in. Now, another thing, after this video, I put a link down below for House of Macadamia. Now, I know that seems irrelevant, but monounsaturated fats in macadamia nuts are being demonstrated to be one of the better foods when it comes down to insulin resistance. It's pretty interesting. Now, I'm not saying that they're gonna diagnose, cure, treat anything, but if you like macadamia nuts, you've got to check House of Macadamia out. Okay, so there's a link down below with a code THOMAS20 that'll save you 20% off your entire order. But they have macadamia nut bars, which are the only bar that I know about on the market where the first ingredient is actually macadamia nuts. It's not just a couple little smidgets of macadamia. No, it's like legit macadamia nut. Then they have amazing regular macadamia nuts that are roasted, like they have like a Maui onion flavor that is delicious. Good old regular macadamia nut, just with sea salt. I mean, all kinds of stuff, just terrific. And if you're really looking for a little treat, they have a sugar-free chocolate-covered macadamia nut, which is awesome too. So they harvest these macadamia nuts in South Africa, right where they should be harvested, right where the bulk of macadamia nuts are really grown, and then they, process and everything literally an hour away from where they grow them. So that link and that code THOMAS20 will save you 20% off your entire order with them. Plus, with any purchase using that link, a free 20 ounce bottle of cold pressed macadamia nut oil. Literally the only cold pressed macadamia nut oil that I know of that's on the market. And you're getting one completely free if you just use that link down below. There's no catches, it's just to get the word out there. So we've established that estrogen is helpful for insulin sensitivity, but we don't really know why. With that, we look at a study that was published in Diabetes. Now, this study is interesting because it took a look at mice. And for context, what we do is we take a look at mice studies when A, we don't really know what's going on yet and we can't do it in humans, or B, when we're trying to sort of validate something that we uncovered in humans, we wanna understand mechanisms. So with this mice study, they had regular mice that were on estrogen therapy, and they had mice that were on estrogen therapy, and they had a gene knocked out. And this gene that was knocked out was FOXO1. The name's not important. But what they found is that insulin sensitivity improved in the estrogen-treated mice, but insulin sensitivity did not improve in the estrogen-treated mice that had this gene knocked out. Why this is important is it validates that there is a reason, it's not just random. Something to do with this pathway with insulin resistance and this particular FOXO1 gene. When that gene was removed, estrogen didn't have a positive impact. So we do see that it seems as though estrogen plays a powerful role. We see it in the human data and we see it in the mechanistic rodent data. But I thought estrogen was bad. Like I thought we, you know, we, we hear that there's so much xenoestrogen, so much phytoestrogens out there. And to a certain degree, yes, like receipt paper, BPAs, things that disrupt estrogen, that's a problem. But estrogen is very good, and estrogen is very good metabolically. Estrogen is very important for women, and it's very important for insulin sensitivity. So what are we supposed to do? Well, here's the thing. If your estrogen levels are already high, and you were to consume something like flax or something like sesame, the phytoestrogens in those plants or in those seeds typically occupy an estrogen receptor and actually block estrogen from affecting it. So in a weird way, it's actually not harming you, only if you go crazy overboard. But if you're estrogen deficient, 
they can actually help you. So eating things like flax and sesame might help you, but putting that aside, five or 10 milligrams of dehydroepiandosterone, also known as DHEA, that is a precursor for estrogen. That might just be what your body, especially over the age of 30, really needs to help produce estrogen. So five to 10 milligrams could be perfect. Start with five, see how you feel. But also take it alongside cod liver oil so you're getting sufficient vitamin D because vitamin D is required in that estrogen formation too, as are almost all the vitamin Bs. Okay, so really focus on getting vitamin Bs in. If you can, eat a little bit of liver or something like that, that's got a nice source of vitamin B there, but it's not the, not the best tasting, I know. So cod liver oil for your vitamin D, okay? Then things like liver or however you can get B vitamins in, five to 10 milligrams of DHEA. But if you wanna stimulate estrogen sort of a different way, black cohosh is really good, and also chassaberry is really good just to drive up estrogen levels. So in tandem with DHEA, that might help you out. But again, you gotta start small. You're not trying to send things through the roof. You're just trying to combat sort of the androgenic properties that might make you more insulin resistant as you get older. I'll see you tomorrow.